The weather is so nice out lately, but I feel like I see fewer and fewer flowers at this time of year. It's spring, we should see some flowers. I know what you mean. I've seen fewer bees and birds around lately, too. Uh, guys, we have a pollen crisis. Wait, what do you mean a pollen crisis? Haven't you heard about it? Are no, we haven't. What's Are a pollen crisis? Do you know what pollination is and why it's important? I have heard about pollination before, but I don't really know much about it. I know that pollination has to do with bees and flowers, but other than that, I don't really know. Well, you are right about the bees being important for pollination. Bees are actually nature's greatest pollinators. They're kind of like the MVP in the pollination game. The pollination game? Well, yeah. It helps to look at pollination like it's a game and nature is trying to win. So what happens in this game? Well, the ultimate goal is for nature's pollinators to carry pollen from one flower to another so that the flowers can reproduce. Pollinators also allow for different food crops to successfully reproduce to give us fruits and vegetables to eat. So what happens when flowers and other plants are pollinated? Pollination is when bees, butterflies, and other pollinators go to a flower or plant to, to gather the nectar in the base of the petals. When they do this, they rub their body against the stamen of the plant and they get pollen on themselves. When they move to another flower to feed, some of that pollen then rubs off onto the new plant stigma. Plants that are pollinated by animals are often more brightly colored and have a strong smell that attracts these pollinators. Many players, or bees and butterflies, are needed for this game so that nature can win. It's not just bees that do all of the work, though. Wait, other species pollinate besides bees? No way. Actually, there are a lot of different species that pollinate, such as small birds like hummingbirds, monarch butterflies, wasps, hoverflies, even bats. Sometimes, even the wind and water can help pollinate by spreading flower pollen from one location to another. Birds? Yeah, many small birds, including hummingbirds and sunbirds, pollinate wildflowers. These flowers are brightly colored as well as curved and tube shaped so that their beaks can get the nectar in the process. Birds get pollen on their heads and then carry that to the next flower. And bats too? Yeah, bats help to pollinate bananas, mangoes, peaches, cashews, and avocados. They pollinate in the same way that the birds pollinate too, but the flowers they pollinate are large and wide mouthed so the bats can fit in, since bats don't have beaks. The flowers are often light colored and give off a smell that attracts the bats, and their heads get covered with pollen like the birds so that they can bring that to the next flower too. So why are bees considered nature's greatest pollinators? I don't think I'm the right person to tell you about how important bees are, but I think I know someone who is. Ah, hey! These two need to know about why bees are nature's greatest pollinators. So you guys want to know how important the role is that bees play in our ecosystem? Yeah, I was just wondering, why would you need bees if there are so many other pollinators? Well, Eva, all those pollinators are very important, but by far the most important ones are bees. Here in the U.S., about 4,000 native species of bees are responsible for pollinating crops everywhere. To do this, honeybees can actually communicate the distance between the nectar source and the hive itself by performing a special dance. They are so effective in their strategy because they only visit one type of flower, bringing the pollen from flower to flower for successful reproduction. Without bees, it is very unlikely that plants will get pollinated and be able to reproduce. Bees are more efficient than other animals, and they actually boost the economy every year by contributing 80% of all crop pollen. Without them, farmers and consumers would have fewer products, like chocolate, for example, or strawberries. What? No chocolate? So what do bees and butterflies have to do with the pollination crisis that's happening? Well, Eva, unfortunately, bees and butterflies are facing very high levels of threat, especially due to deforestation and insecticides that can kill native uh, pollinators. The air pollution being emitted due to human activities can ne negatively affect many pollinators that rely on scent trails to continue to pollinate only one type of flower, as this ability may be destroyed by pollution. What happens if bees and butterflies can't pollinate? Pollination is a major process essential to the success of modern agriculture, as well as the economy. If bees and butterflies aren't able to pollinate, then farmers everywhere will experience a severe decrease in crop growth and output. What does this mean? Well, that means that plants don't get fertilized like they need to, and if they don't get fertilized, then they won't re reproduce and grow. So that means less fruits and veggies, less flowers, and even less chocolate. Bees and other pollinators are currently facing many threats that could disrupt their ability to pollinate flowers and plants. What threats are they facing? A main food source, milkweed, is being destroyed by humans. Many humans believe that milkweed is just another pest plant and that it serves no other purpose, but they're wrong. 
Monarch butterflies actually use this plant to lay their eggs, and the larvae also eat them. How severe is this threat? Currently, these pollinators are facing high levels of threat, especially the bees and butterflies. It's believed that more than 40% of these invertebrate species are threatened in their local habitats. I know that many pesticides are used on crop plants. Is this part of the current threat on pollinators? Yes! Pesticides can pollute the air and affect pollinators that rely on scent trails to reach flowers and crops. Some insecticides also make their way into pollen grains and can harm the bees and their young that are used as a food source. Well, I have seen some new, new bees to this area. Where did they come from? Bees, new bees, are actually an invasive species. They have immigrated from other countries such as Europe, and they make it harder for native bees to do their job. These invasive species are not only bees, but they can also be plants, invasive plants, and that overcrowd wildflowers that are used by pollinators, especially butterflies that need the, water, the wildflowers to survive. As the weather becomes warmer, we should be able to see bees buzzing around. Yeah, since the weather was so mild, and we're having such an early spring, I'm excited to start seeing the bees and the butterflies doing their jobs. Guys, it's still winter. The bees should be hibernating, but instead they're out and eating their food that they've been storing up. And since the flowers still think it's winter, there's nothing to replenish their supply. So the bees could starve? All because of the real early nice weather we've been having? Yeah, it's not good. Plus, in places like California, where there was a run of rain in the past, the flowers couldn't even make enough nectar to feed the bees. That's not good. I was enjoying the next weather too. I had no idea about how it could affect the pollen problem. Then would it be good if temperature dropped again until spring actually sprung? That would also affect the flowers negatively since any frost could damage the ones that are starting to bloom, which again would leave the bees with nothing to eat. Hey! Hi, how's it going? It's going well, thanks. And thanks again for telling my friends about pollination the other day. No problem, I love telling people about bees and butterflies. I always knew that bees were pollinators, but never butterflies. I think that's just amazing. Yes, I agree. Monarch butterflies pollinate many wildflowers. They aren't as usually helpful to agricultural plants because they pollinate in smaller areas and their legs are longer and further away from the uh, flower's pollen, so less sticks to their body. Wow, that is amazing. I've always loved butterflies, but I never knew they were such great wildflower pollinators. They are awesome, and monarch butterflies pollinate a variety of flowers during each day, and they help with seed and fruit production. They can also travel for longer distances to different wildflowers. Is that why I always see butterflies landing on brightly colored flowers? Yes, butterflies are drawn to brightly colored flowers. Butterflies are also a great indicator species. This means that they can help us know if an ecosystem is healthy or not. So if I plant a garden full of colorful flowers here, will butterflies be drawn to it? Absolutely. Planting a nectar-rich flower garden is a great way to help the butterflies continue pollinating. You also mentioned that climate change seems to be really bad for the bees and butterflies. What can we do to help them? Well, even though the changing climate is damaging to the bees, there are many ways to help the pollinators. I heard that if we provide nesting sites for them, we can give them more opportunities to live. But don't bumblebees nest in holes that have been abandoned by mammals, or in open stone walls, or abandoned bird boxes in other hollow areas? What are nesting sites? Nesting sites are places that bees will make their homes. Native bees like ground nesting sites and wood nesting sites. What do you mean by ground and wood nesting sites? A ground nesting site is a small patch that is not disturbed by humans or other animals. They are also not filled with plants and are better if they face the south so it can get the most sun as possible during the day. So then what are wood nesting sites? Wood nesting sites are useful because bees use holes or cavities that are already in wood or dry plant stems and we can provide more of these holes for them to use. A good way to do this is to leave any dead tree or tree limb undisturbed to provide a natural nesting habitat. When pruning shrubs, if you notice that they are hollow or soft inside, usually found in raspberry, roses, sumac, elderberry, goldenrod, and coneflower, cut some stems back to a foot in height and to, brush to provide bee nesting sites. Can we build artificial nesting sites for pollinators as well? Yes, some bees will nest in artificial nesting sites, blocks of preservative free wood with drilled holes of different diameters. These bee blocks are great ways uh, are a great way about to learn about native bees because it's easy to observe them periodically. While they may provide some habitat, recent research raises concern that these sites may provide habitat for non-native species, which may compete with our native species, and could result in increased parasitism rates on bees using them. Also, when used, it's very important to have an inner paper lining and replace it annually. Otherwise, if any bees are diseased, the disease can easily spread to bees using the holes in the next year. Wow, it seems we can do a lot to protect the bees. 
Yes, we can if we all try. We can all also provide food for them by planting flowers and plants such as milkweed, reducing our use of pesticides and provide clean sources of water for bees all year long. From now on, I'm going to do whatever I can to help the pollinators. I pledge to protect the bees. Will you take the pledge with us? I pledge to protect the bees. 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 I pledge to protect the bees.